Hello and welcome back. We'll be looking at a new camera today, the Canon Arrow 5C. And whether you should consider it as a game changer or it's just one of those next things that's just an extra tool to your toolkit, but it all comes down to perspective. But that will come after the intro. I'll be going through my notes because there's a lot to cover on this camera. This is the Canon Arrow 5C. A very small form factor camera that no larger than the previous Arrow 5 lineup and also in the same vein as the Canon Arrow series. It uses the Canon RF mount and you can see it's very slim and very small in its design and how it actually looks. It actually packs a full frame for the 5 megapixel sensor that actually covers an 8K area. Which backed by internal cooling makes the whole overheating issue of the R5 becomes a thing of the past. The C in the camera is for the cinema series which means that it's built to actually match properly with the cinema lineup such as the C70s, the C300 Mark 3s, the C500 Mark 2s and that's like an amazing future because part of what it actually brings it it has the ability to record 8k in raw standard or raw light which is the new compression mode that canon has introduced that's also available in the c70s now and you can see how that ties in quickly with the c70 and also ties in quickly with the c300 mark 3 because all has the capability of both shooting raw light and they also have the ability to have both c-log 2 and c-log 3 but in this camera we do not have c-log 2 which has the maximum dynamic range stops but available in it is also a c-log 3 and if we look at the camera going forward we can see that it is equipped with a small time code port and mini hdmi ports and also a usb-c for power a microphone head jack and also a mic in for actually capturing sounds port that's related to the synchronization of your flash the camera is is what i would call the near perfect hybrid because let's face it there is no perfect camera there's only what a tool that solves your problem and how you can actually maximize that tool to all its potentials and this camera packs a whole lot of functions for those who are in the photo world and those who are actually in the stills world and this brings an interesting choice that makes it considered as a true hybrid whether it did the best hybrid well time will tell but for now it's a very versatile tool that we can actually dive in Going forward, you actually have the ability, apart from the codec options that's available, which is the H.265 in the MP4 and the H.264 that's in the MP4, which is a lot more easier to edit in older computers. Codecs such as the XAVC that gives you the 4 to 2 10-bit signal that allows you to be able to capture log and actually grade in post that would integrate perfectly into your workflow that will give you longer recording times should you need longer recording times for what you what you want to do. Like the um, C300 Mark III, it accepts a CF Express card and also a V90 card. And that's unique because it actually gives you the ability to be able to record raw in one card and a different codec in another card and also different resolutions. So you can come up with your own unique workflow that's related to that. For me, I'll probably just leave um, my um, CF Express as my main card, maybe one terabyte in there and probably use a V90 for proxies for, so I can actually send out proxies to an editor immediately. And that may be my own style of actually using this camera if I'm supposed to use it. The camera itself is a full frame camera, but you could crop it into Super 35, which would be a windowed version. I see that useful for me when I'm shooting, let's say I have an 85 on this and I really need to go further. I can see that becoming like a useful tool in the pinch where you ha have to actually really go in. Or when you're doing those shots whereby you don't have a diopter to actually bring you closer, but you have to like window in closer. That could be like a... Um, negotiable compromise that you could actually use as a tool to get out of a tight spot. The 8K oversampling um, nature of the sensor, what this means is that every resolution you, the camera is constantly shooting in 8K, every resolution, but when you say you press HD, what it does, it takes that oversampled um, 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 8K file and downsample it into a HD file. You get um, cleaner blacks, you have low noise because you're compressing an 8K or you're scaling down an 8K resolution from a full frame into that windowed um, um, new resolution, which is being compressed and being re repackaged. So you get cleaner footage, you have finer details in your colors, you have less moray, you have, um, low noise less active which just makes it a whole lot better because it's actually scaling down from a large sensor rather than 
um, cropping in which we know cameras like red actually they usually like just cropping 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 and never down samples I do not know if that has changed but as of my last time with those cameras they usually just cropping so you get like a um, um, 6k a different resolution when you move to 5k your focal length changes and that really really messed things up when you're actually trying to get the right field of view it usually throws you off the track but this keeps you it's quite interesting because it keeps you in the same vein because you know what you're looking at your lens choice is still your lens choice except you're going to a windowed mode which you would now know okay here's the crop factor and you can actually calculate and know what's the new um, focal length you're actually going into since you're trying to like get into the punch like we talked about of, of using the, the windowed mode such as the super 35 and the super 16 modes if you're shooting in 4k you can get up to 120 frames per second on 8k you can get up to 60 fps in raw when shooting in 4k 120 frames per second the camera does not crop into the sensor so you get the entire field of view and this is usually great when you're shooting products and you're shooting those high speeds and you actually have even when you're shooting 8k also you, can, you have all that visual imagery to be able to um, negotiate those certain details you want to accentuate or you want to actually reframe or for whatever visual effect or stabilization purposes you could reframe the area and be able to like um, use that as a as a working yastic to elevate the quality of your work when using the Canon RF's mount um, you could actually use autofocus in your slow motion and you have um, things like the eye detection the head detection and the face detection and not just the traditional face detection or a track that's available there's a lot few more that's available on this autofocus which makes it interesting i'm um, carrying off a couple of characteristics from the r5 and bringing them here and that's like a good turn for a pinch which allows a one-man band to be able to function independently and rely um, on the autofocus of the camera system as a second assistant to be able to get through his daily work and that's super amazing for what it brings the hot shoe on the camera you can attach a tascam um, audio recorder here that gives you the ability to connect um, four x XLRs, four channels of XLRs into the camera that could probably come down to taste I personally will not go for that because anything that takes my package out of balance and make it a lot more bigger and out of form it's something I actually shy away from but it gives you four channels of XLR so if you're doing things like interview um, documentary things that actually like standard cotton nail that don't allow you move and rig do all those um, long form format gives you all those access to be able to um, capture a variety of audio so you can get from your boom from your lapel also from scratch or whatever mix down if you have two characters whatever it is you can all bring them into the four tracks that's available by that device that's actually connected via this special hot shoe also on the side you have like your mic in to put the normal shot gun mic that connects via um, a three-quarter jack to the camera and you'll be able to get like your audios into the camera also but that's like for scratch audio so when it comes to power consumption because the camera is always recording in 8k irrespective of whatever resolution you're recording it guzzles up a lot of power because there's a whole lot of things that affect the battery runtime. So, um, in respect of what the white sheet from Canon says, just by making different options of um, codec compression resolutions, um, autofocus tracking, and several other things could determine how much power the camera sucks from the battery. The traditional battery does not have. Um, enough to be able to deliver the 9 volt 3 amps consistently or even more power when the camera decides to record at 8k 60 frames per second as a result most of the camera autofocus function will not be enabled and this will not be a problem if you're used to manual lens because um, the workflow never relies on the um, autofocus on the system but um, the camera also has a USB-C that actually takes power delivery that you can actually use in surpassing that limitation but that brings an interesting problem of how do you want to rig it to the camera that makes it cinema friendly because the camera is new we yet to see some solutions in the market that's tailored to um, a proper cinema solution because this is the arrow 5c and not just like um, a normal camera to see for cinema so we're yet to see um, cinema power solutions um, a couple are coming up there's like a DTAP adapter that allows you to use v-mount solution so you could use like a 99 watts or you could use um, there's there's a Chinese company that makes a battery I think is Zion or Zhenguan some, something like that stacked with Z and those could also work straight because power delivery has a unique technology that allows both um, electronics speak to themselves and actually um, draw the required amount of power that's required between both devices and that could be like a V mount solution that you could actually customly build who's this camera for um, because there are a couple of questions you should ask yourself it's do you need 8k 
Do you need 8K 60 frames per second? Do you know when 8K is valid in your workflow? At what point do you know that, okay, now this is the time that I feel this is the right choice to actually make the move into 8K and actually buying in all, into all the solutions or tools that this device presents? Um, because there's also the cost, what's the cost of data? Like the cost of your storage. Shooting in 8K means that you'd have to have expensive cards like you can't deal with at the 128 gig level for your v90s you'd have to play at the one terabyte for your cf cf express b to be able to get um longer record times if you're actually going to be working in feature films or when shooting docs or um, those long format from my own perspective uh, and this is you quite unique to me the way i would use this camera is that i would use it as a um a tool down the food chain um i have the bigger cameras which are the C300 Mark III's, which uh, are amazing for cinema solution and traditional builds whereby you go on tripods or you go on bigger gimbals. And I have like a C70's whereby you can put on um, any of all any of the gimbal solutions and also the Arrow Trinity that can actually go on um, um, car rigs and any of the steady cams, which are lighter solutions that you can um, use for longer time. Now, this is now more interesting because um, solutions like the Tilta um, car rigs could actually have this as a dedicated cam for their car um, solution because it's quite light it's quite efficient you could use the Canon RF glasses if you're using PL glasses you could use Dizio Vesprit primes they also have small form factors I look forward to also testing those primes with this camera in 8k and see how they resolve because that's like also an interesting glass um, you could also look for other um, very compact options which could, you could use as your BC cameras that you could use as a crash cam. You could rig probably three of this in the car and have like a decent conversation and not be worried about the weight and how the lens and how the small compact file. And that's how I would you, um, look to use it. So on traditional day, the A cams would be like there. So when we're moving, okay, to the B cams, I could put this on the on um, a steady cam or on some um, um, digital photo um, um, Thanos rig. Another place that I could actually in integrate this in my workflow is because I shoot a couple of products, this camera becomes very essential because there are certain details when you have your probe lens that um, the 8K would actually become a universal tool for you to actually reframe the shot based on um, it shoots at, the probe lens shoots at, at, at from t14 to t22 which is almost everything is in focus already you get and at the macro level you can actually now reframe and get more shot and actually uh, and repurpose um, um, the camera in unique ways that are actually um, useful to read another way where we could use 8k is for um, visual effects and stabilization whereby um, we get to reframe the sensor using um, external markers on our monitors or probably tapes on monitors that don't have markers and we use those left out areas for um, warp stabilization or, or stabilization of, of camera footage for, for cases that are unique to what we're doing. Also an interesting way to actually um, repurpose and use um, the 8K that comes out of this camera. And given the fact that um, it has C-Log3 that allows me to capture 12 stops because I know C-Log3 captures more than, close to um, 13 stops of dynamic range, right? I can get 12 um, very clean usable stops. And for the fact that I can load lot and I can record raw, which means, um, I'm not baking the lookup table into the footage, but I can keep all cameras unified from this camera to the C70 to the C300 Mark III or to the C500 Mark II, depending on what you have. It just makes it a whole lot more interesting as a visual solution that you can actually use. So you should ask yourself, do you need 8K? If you do not need 8K, then there is no need actually because there's also the cost of storage, the computing power that actually comes with processing this footage. Um, most of the M1s gets to still um, play it back, but render time has still not improved because there are no yet dedicated encoders that I do know of that in the M1s that are dedicated to like speed up the workflow, but they can actually keep up. So if you're a hybrid shooter that should both steals and do travel work and do docker work and do food and do product videos and do a bit of commercials, then this could be um, the right thing to look into. If you do also music videos, action in a low budget you could also um, take a dip into this end and this our corporate work this could also be great for you but as a documentary cameras um, I would most likely go for the C70 for the fact that this camera do not have an internal ND but Canon also provide the EF to RF adapter that has the ability to um, slot in an, an, an internal ND that you can actually dial in but that's actually a unique solution that you would have to add an added cost to the 4500 that you need to get um, the camera for and when it comes to also time code also um, biggest um, um, challenges to the camera are the ports that are available they're actually unique ports they're not like generic so like the HDMI is a micro HDMI and we all know how fiddle that could get if you actually 
actually doing external monitoring by doing wireless um, solutions. So you have to get like a um, standard HDMI to a micro HDMI to be able to explore that kind of solution. If that gets damaged in your shoe, there's no backup to actually turn to. Now that that's like one of the challenges with the camera that you have to deal with and have to figure out a workaround or a safe way or rigging or cage to actually protect the ports and see because we're still yet to get third party solutions that are designed to actually purpose for the camera. The time code also has a unique cable because of all these unique factors you'd have to find the adaptation to like your tentacle sync track a or some other um, um, time code device that you actually use with the camera to actually pumping time code into the camera. A camera is, all, is only as good as its weakest points and you as the creator, it lies in your um, keep to actually um, focus on how you can play to its strengths and less those weaknesses so you can set up the camera for success so that actually affects your project. So if you found this video useful, please leave it, give it a thumbs up so it helps YouTube actually share with others and let them know that this video is useful to you. And um, until next time, improvise, adapt and overcome. I'll see you.